with me, Lavender Sparkles. How are we all doing today? Today, we're going to read another book. It's called Room on the Broom. Do we all know this one? Yeah. This is another book by Julia Donaldson. And the pictures are done by Axel Scheffler again. So what I'll do, the same as last week, I wave my magic wand earlier on and I've got all the pictures that's going to come up on the screen for you so that you can read along with me. So what I'll do is I will push these magic buttons and let's see if we can get the pictures on the screen. There we go, can we see them all? Yeah! So, there's a front cover, it's called Room on the Broom by Julia Donaldson. Okay, and then we'll just go... Let's open up the book. See? Right, Broom on the Broom, act by Julia Donaldson, and the pictures have been done by Axel Scheffler. Let's open up. Can we all see the witch? And a wee cat on the broom? How cool is that? Here we go. Let's read the story. The witch had a cat and a very tall hat and long ginger hair she wore in a plait. How the cat purred and how the witch grinned as they sat on the broomstick and flew in the wind. But how the witch wailed and how the cat spat when the wind blew so wildly, it blew off her hat. <gasps> oh no! Down! cried the witch, and they flew to the ground. They searched for the hat, but no hat could be found. <gasps> but then, out of the bushes, on thundering paws, there bounded a dog with a hat in its jaws. He dropped it. Can you hear the dog? Yeah. <laughs> he dropped it politely, then eagerly said, as the witch pulled the hat, Firmly down on her head. I am a dog, as keen as can be. Is there room on the broom for a dog like me? Yes, cried the witch, and the dog clambered on. The witch tapped the broomstick, and whoosh, they were gone. Dog's still shouting to get on that broom. Over the fields and the forests they flew. The dog wagged his tail and the stormy winds blew. The witch laughed aloud <laughs> and held on to her hat. But away blew the bow from her long ginger plait. Oh man! Down! cried the witch and they flew to the ground. They searched for the bow but no bow could be found. Then out from the tree, with an ear-splitting shriek, there flapped a, a green bird with the bow in her beak. She dropped it politely and bent her head low, then said as the witch tied her flat in a bow, I am a bird, as green as can be. Is there room on the broom for a bird like me? Yes, cried the witch. So the bird fluttered on, the witch tapped the broomstick, and whoosh, they were gone. Over the reeds and the rivers they flew, the bird shrieked with glee, and the stormy winds blew. They shot through the sky to the back of beyond. The witch clutched her bow, but let go of her wand. Down, cried the witch, and they flew to the ground. They searched for the wand, but no wand could be found. Then, all of a sudden, from out of the pond, leapt a dripping wet frog with a dripping wet wand. He dropped it politely, then said with a croak, as the witch dried her wand on the fold of her cloak. I am a frog, as clean as can be. Is there room on the broom for a frog like me? 
Yes, said the witch. So the frog bounded on. The witch tapped the broomstick and whoosh, they were gone. Over the moors and the mountains they flew. The frog jumped for joy and... The broom snapped in two! <gasps> Down fell the cat and the dog and the frog. Down they went tumbling into a bog. The witch's half broomstick flew into a cloud and the witch heard a roar that was scary and loud. I am a dragon as mean as can be and I'm planning to have witching chips for my tea. No! cried the witch flying higher and higher. The dragon flew after her, breathing out fire. Help! cried the witch, flying down to the ground. She looked all around, but no help could be found. The dragon drew nearer and licking his lips said, Maybe this once I'll have witch without chips. But just as he planned to begin on his feast, out from a ditch rose a terrible beast. It was tall, dark and stinky and feathered and furred. It had four frightful heads. It had wings like a bird. And its terrible voice when it started to speak was a yowl and a growl and a croak and a shriek. It dripped and it squelched as it strode from the ditch. And it said to the dragon, Buzz off! That's my witch! The dragon drew back and he started to shake. Uh, I'm sorry, he spluttered. I, I, I made a mistake. It, it's nice to have met you, but now I must fly. And he spread out his wings and was off through the sky. Then, down flew the bird and down jumped the frog. Down climbed the cat and... Whew! said the dog. And thank you, oh thank you, the grateful witch cried. Without you, I'd be in that dragon's inside. Then she filled up her cauldron and said with a grin, Find something, everyone, throw something in. So the frog found a lily, the cat found a cone. The bird found a twig and the dog found a bone. They threw them all in and the witch stirred them well and while she was stirring she muttered a spell. Iggity, ziggity, zaggity, zoom! Then out goes a truly magnificent broom! Yay! With seats for the witch and the cat and the dog, a nest for the bird and a shower for the frog! Yes! cried the witch and they all clambered on. The witch tapped the broomstick and whoosh! They were gone. Look at that wee frog in its shower. How cool is that? Oh, that's the end of that story, boys and girls. Did you like that one? That was a good story. Thank you to all the boys and girls that suggested that last week. That was a good suggestion. If anyone's got any suggestions for, a bo for books that we can read in the next couple of weeks, get your adults to put them in the comments. And we'll look through them and see how many of people's favourite books we can read. Whilst we're doing homeschooling, might as well, eh? So, 
I've got another activity that we can try and do this week, boys and girls. Hopefully you'll enjoy this one. The, the adults might enjoy this one as well, because you just get to get involved too. So, in Scotland next week, there's a special celebration, a special day. Does anyone know what it is? Hmm. Give you a clue. We normally, when we're at school and nursery, sing songs or poems. Anybody think what it might be? Yeah, that's right. It's Burns Day next Monday. Yeah. So because we're not at school or nursery, we're not going to get to do our poems and our recitals. We're not going to have a Burns competition. That's a bit sad, isn't it? Yeah. So, what I thought we could do is we could have a virtual Burns competition. Yeah. So, what we can do is we get to find our favourite Scots poem or a Scots song, because there's loads of them. What I think I would like for you to do is do a performance for me and get your adult to video it. And then pop it in the comments and we'll go through them all and we're going to announce a winner next week when we do Facebook Live. So you've got all week to practice rather than just in a day. That sound good? Yeah. And I look forward to seeing all of the entries. Rather than doing just a quick Facebook Live, I thought we could do a virtual game today. <gasps> yeah. So... Some of the adults might give you a row for speaking what we call slang. <laughs> adults are nodding their heads. Oh no. So, I want to play a game that's going to test how much Scottish slang you know. So, if I ask all you boys and girls to ston up, do you know what that means? Yep, yeah, it means stand up. Stand up, everybody. We're going to play a game. This one's called Stone Up, Sit Down. You can see where I'm going with this. Yeah. So if everybody, if you stone up, and I'm going to give you some things to do, and I want to see if you, if you know what I mean. Okay. So if I say, put both your arms in the air, what are you going to do? Put both your arms in the air. You're going to put your hands in the air. Yeah. Well done! Then I'm going to ask you to waggle your fingers. Do you know what that means? You're going to waggle your fingers. Well done! Yeah! Then I'm going to ask you to hit your horns on your head. Hit your horns. On your head. Well done. Are we getting it? Yeah, we're getting the hang of things now. Then I'm going to ask you to hit your horns. Hit your horns on your shoulders. What's your shoulders? That's right, it's your shoulders. So put your horns on your shoulders. Well done, yay. Then I'm going to ask you to touch your toes. What do you mean by touch your toes? That's right, touch your toes. Well done. Then I'm going to ask you to burl about. What does burl about mean? That's right, it means spinning round and round and round. Well done. Then I'm going to ask you. To give yourself a good sugar. What do you think that means? Yeah, you're right. It means give yourself a sugar. Yeah, well done. And then I'm going to say, put your arms in the air. That is right. Put your arms in the air. Put your horns on your head. That's it. Horns on your head. Put your horns on your shoulders. 
Well done! And now I'm going to ask you to sit down. That's it. Fantastic! So we've had a wee bit of game time today. We've had a story today. And, and we've got a wee activity for you to do through the week. We've had a full time today, haven't we? As I said before, if you've got any suggestions for books, get your adult to pop them in the comments so that we can try and see if we can read everybody's favourite story. Yeah? And then we'll keep going with some wee different activities for us to do as well. Yeah, it sounds good fun. Did we all have good fun today, boys and girls, at story time? Fantastic. So, I will be back here, Facebook Live, next Thursday at one o'clock. We're going to announce the winner of our virtual burns competition. So let's see all your entries. Let's see how many we can get and how amazing they're all going to be. Bet you we're all going to find a different song to sing as well or a poem to read. So I will see you all next week, boys and girls, for more story time with Lavender Sparkles. See you next week, guys. Bye-bye.